In Somalia, an urgent fight against one of the world's biggest terror threats. We're with U.S. forces now training Somali troops in live fire drills and hand-to-hand -hand combat. The target, Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda subsidiary responsible for deadly attacks across Africa, including on American civilians. They are well-financed and better armed than the Somali military, according to U.S. military officials here in the region. Brigadier General Peter Bailey helps oversee strategy, plans and programs for U.S. Africa Command. What we've seen is not necessarily holding land or territory, more extortion, more closer to an organized crime organization. What does Somalia need to defeat al-Shabaab? Courtney, I think what we're witnessing right now is what Somalia needs. They need a qualified security force, which is trained up into the mob. Uh, they need democratic reform uh, to make sure the government is recognized as being legitimate. And they also need a desired end state, a shared security goal and working with allies and partners in order to achieve that shared uh, desired end state. U.S. troops are not on the front lines here, but do watch from overhead drones. This exclusive video shows Somali forces taking back territory that al-Shabaab once held. This is the Joint Operations Center. The video was first seen here, where the U.S. military monitors drone feeds of Somali special operators during missions. When trouble arises, the U.S. can provide support with airstrikes. There's very deliberate considerations and a checklist that we take into account before we provide this requested support to defend our partners. That decision made by the commander of U.S. Special Operations Task Force East Africa. We can't identify him for safety concerns. He says he turns down more strikes than he approves, often to avoid civilian casualties. One strike won't win or lose this war, mm -hmm. but one bad strike will take that authority and capability away from us um, and have ramifications that impact not only us, but also the international community that's here supporting Somalis. He knows that means not being able to help the Somalis he works with every day. It is tough. It's something I think about um, every day. Uh, like I said, it's, a, it's a, a human aspect of this job that we all have to take very seriously. These Somali troops face incredible danger. Roughly 600 have been killed or wounded since last fall, according to military officials in the region. Their biggest threat from al-Shabaab? IEDs. Counter IED training takes place here, which is very important in Somalia. Um, IEDs are, pose a significant problem, so some of our troops provide that support as well. And basic marksmanship, uh, patrolling, tactics. You know, small, small unit warfare tactics. About 350 recruits graduated today. They're now Somali special forces, and dozens of these men and women will be on the front lines in the battle against al-Shabaab in a matter of days. That includes a handful of women. It's giving women opportunities. That's a very big opportunity. That's something like we're proud of. At 21, she was one of the first females to ever join the Danab. Now 24, she's seen combat firsthand. I wasn't afraid at all. I would actually go again. You would go again? Are you, do you think, do you see yourself staying in the military for your entire career? Yeah, since it was a hobby from childhood, yes. And I see myself going up. Today's graduation, a harsh reminder of Al-Shabaab's stronghold. This is Baladogle Airfield, a former Soviet military base, now where the U.S. trains the Danab. The training camp here, officially renamed after Major Hassan Tor, killed last month by al-Shabaab. His death driving the Danab to fight even harder. Having a guy like that, he's there one minute and gone the next, it's, uh, it's almost like losing a, a, a teammate, you know? Um, I never thought I would say that in my many years, but I've come to really be proud of what the Somalis are doing. I haven't seen this in Afghanistan or Iraq. So seeing the willingness, and especially for a commander, a top, a senior level leader, to go out and fight al-Shabaab the way that he did, uh, it was disheartening to lose him. Even without the terror threat, Somalis face bleak conditions. More than 90 percent of the wheat here comes from Russia and Ukraine. They're enduring the worst drought in recorded history, made worse by a fifth failed rainy season. Nearly half the population here is starving. And with projections for the drought to get even worse, famine is looming. Is the world doing enough to help the Somali people? No, the American people are. Uh, the American people have been extremely generous. We really need to see 
Somalia's partners, traditional partners, new partners, respond to this human tragedy. Making matters worse, al-Shabaab retaliation tactics, burning crops, killing livestock, and poisoning water wells, for some, the only source of drinkable water. How would you characterize their hold on this country still? Al-Shabaab uh, has controlled uh, for uh, between 10 and 15 years different parts of the country in central and southern uh, Somalia. Uh, what this government uh, has done is initially respond to an insurgency inside the insurgency. That is, uh, the people oppressed and extorted by al-Shabaab uh, rose up uh, and then they dialed 911 and they called uh, on their government to come save them. The American people um, are uh, supporting this effort in, in some practical ways, as are a number of other international partners. This is not all about us. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, not our war. Uh, it is a war uh, by the Somali uh, uh, security forces to liberate their own people. We know that al-Shabaab uh, has killed Americans. They have, uh, uh, they have uh, as an al-Qaeda affiliate, they aspire uh, for attacks on the homeland. Uh, so this is in our interest and it's in Somalia's interest. So we have a shared objective, uh, shared goals, shared interests. The Somali government has vowed to drive al-Shabaab out of areas they control, but this military is too small to hold the areas after they've cleared them, leaving local militias to police the newly freed land, often with no training and armed only with their own personal weapons. The African Union provides almost 20,000 troops and helicopters to support the Somali military, but their presence is now scheduled to end in late 2024. The head of the African Union mission here says the local militias must be brought into the Somali military. Now the, the local communities, uh, those who are fighting along with uh, the government troops, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we should have a plan for them to integrate, you know, and taken into consideration by the army of uh, Somalia. The Somali government asking the U.S. to train even more Danab, as many as 5,000, and to lift an arms embargo so that the Somali military can compete with their well-equipped, well-financed adversary. Despite the challenges, these new soldiers remarkably undeterred. And tonight, celebration and hope in a place that desperately needs it.